You're listening to Kapow, the pop culture podcast. Comics, television, movies, and more. If it impacts fan culture, we have something to say about it. And now, your hosts, Michael, Jordan, Cliff, and Seth. And thank you for joining us once again, back with your friends at Kapow, the pop culture podcast. Hey, my name's Jordan Lowe. I'm Cliff Barnes. I'm the illustrious Michael K. Easton. And I'm special guest. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rogen, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to episode 249. <laughs> 249. Are we sure? Have we done the math? Did the math get double checked? Or are we just. I'm pretty sure. Like back We're winging it. Math. We're winging it. I think you need to go back and count all the episodes again to make sure that that is 249. If we did that, I'm pretty sure it's not. And then tomorrow I'm going to call you and recertify that that is 249. <laughs> yeah, we'll count it again next week. Right, there is a lawsuit pending that this is not actually 249. <laughs> yeah. Yep, but I true. need you to believe me. It is 249. Michael's hair dye is dripping down mm-hmm. his face. His beard. That's printer beard ink. Dye. It's printer ink running down. <laughs> well, you know, as they say. In that reference might be outdated by the time this comes out. Anyway. Oh, for sure. We have totally <laughs> exposed ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Do you know how far back in the news cycle that's going to be by the time this episode comes out? (laughs) Like, we should start this episode over. (laughs) (laughs) But we don't do that. Okay. One take. That's how we get the 250. (laughs) That's how we get the nearly 250 episode. It's never restarting anything. We just keep on trucking. Is our refrigerator making heinous noises? We don't Probably. Push Bravo. through. <laughs> keep going. Is Michael here? Is he not for a year? Who <laughs> keep on trucking? That's right. We don't have time to check on him. <laughs> I just magically show back up like nothing ever happened. We don't talk about that year. It's like that kid on that show that like he's a oh, kid on a show and then just like disappears and no one talks about him again. Chuck not Cunningham? <laughs> Well, let's not get let's not travel down that path. Yeah. Fall down that hole again. Hey, is Pluto TV cost anything? No, it's free. Um yes. you can uh I have it on my Roku. Yeah, I do too. I told, I mean I I've got the apps on there. I just didn't know if it was something I needed to download. If it's free. There's a couple versions of those like floating around right now that are free. But mm-hmm. you're telling me there's gonna be around the clock family ties and happy days. That's and- what I'm telling you. And you guys, I, Monday, you, Monday, happy day. Happy day Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday, happy day. <laughs> wow. I told Close you guys. Up the shop. We did it. Yeah. I told you guys the other day that Podbean sent us an email letting us know we can now run multiple shows off the same feed. Okay. So here's yeah. your opportunity to do a spinoff. It'll, you know, Kapow loves Chachi or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> wow, well, we so don't love Chachi. <laughs> Joni, Joni loves Kapowchi. Yeah. Wow. Here's your chance. We already did it, though. We already <laughs> talked about it. So. Oh, my gosh. I started rewatching Community. Ugh. I don't know if it's new to Prime or not. I don't, I don't know if it just came on there or whatever. But I just saw it on Prime and started rewatching it. And there's Abed makes some kind of reference to jumping the shark, and Troy gets mad at him. He's like, "Did you know there's an episode where he actually jumps a shark, and it's the best one?" Like he gets he gets so angry at Abed <laughs> for using the phrase "jump the shark" because that's the best episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny. I started going back and watching um, uh, Rick and Morty from episode one, just looking to see if there's little things I missed here or there because. They dropped the rest of, I think, season four. And so I, I watched all this. And I was like, I'm going to go back and see if this is, you know, 
good at episode one like I thought it was. And it still seems to hold up. But, I mean, if you want to really turn that nostalgic dial way back, since you guys have been watching Happy Days, you guys, like, made me think about some old shows and uh, started to do a deep dive back into Cheers that when I was a little kid, I, when it first came out, I was too young to enjoy it. Like, I – it was something my parents watched and I was like kind of annoyed by it. And, but I remember bits and pieces like as I got older, but I am here to tell you that as soon as that show started with episode one, they hit it running like the Mm -hmm. whole cast, like with a lot of new shows, like when they first start out, there's, it's not kind of jiving and they're trying to like, figure out you know who their characters are and if they work out work correctly with each other where this just right out the gate everyone is on point like i mean yeah i I had went back and watched uh the first episode not too long ago and you're right it does just it it it's doesn't really have a beginning to it Mm -mm. it's kind of like it's always been you know you're you're set into this world that's always been around they already know each other and And it it doesn't really change for the whole run of the show (laughs) that it starts out like doing exactly what they do the whole time yeah yeah all 265 episodes yeah the only difference was the only character it really introduces is diane yeah but yeah it's i mean i'm still after all these years i still laugh i'm laughing Rewatching these episodes and they're entertaining. And the only thing that really changes is Ted Danson's hair. Like, I mean, <laughs> that first episode, that that was something else. I mean, that was a lot of hair. Mm-hmm. And he kind of yeah. has it like combed over, like a part. Yeah. 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 It's a big thing. It's a good show. Turns out, cheers. Good show. Still holds that's up. A limb, that's a limb we're willing to go out on. We'll do it. Well, speaking of timely breaking news that we, we <laughs> don't have that'll be old by the time you hear it, a couple uh, movie things dropped. So literally just before we went on the air, uh, I saw they confirmed Deadpool 3 is going forward with Marvel Studios and Disney, because I was kind of up in the air, what would Disney do with this R-rated yeah. Deadpool character? So it is has been confirmed. It's been confirmed. It's going to have an R rating. Ryan Reynolds is back. Uh, there's no director confirmed yet, but the it will have new writers. Uh, it's a sister duo, Wendy and Lizzie Molyneux, who have been writers on Bob's Burgers for several seasons, and they are creators of the new animated show coming to Fox called The Great North. They've been around a bunch of commercials for that. So. Hmm. I, I Bob's Burgers has you know that kind of pop culture humor. I could I could see that working. Who knows? Very good show. Could you imagine them trying to replace Ryan as Deadpool? I mean, no. I just feel like they're they're going to be in a position of people are going to be watching to see if they keep it at that level of pushing the envelope. So anything less than the extreme ridiculousness that came out of the first two is they're going to be accused of softening it up. So it's almost like they're going to have to go further. I'm kind of curious how this plays out. I just, I don't know that, you know, we pay attention to this stuff, but does the vast majority, do the people watching this know the difference? They see the red Marvel logo. Is there any difference between the Marvel Studios and just a Marvel production between the Fox and the X-Men. Like, do they even know any of this stuff or care? No, no they nope. do not. Oh, not at all. Nope. Hmm. Uh, we got the confirmation that Black Panther 2 is starting production in July 2021. Um, they said, again, Ryan Coogler is back to direct. And he have said there's no plans to have like a CGI Chadwick Boseman or do any kind of trickery to work Chadwick Boseman into it. So there's, there's nobody knows what the plot's going to be or will it be Shuri taking over the mantle or what is it going to be, but it's, it's definitely moving forward in some way. 
Man, I wouldn't it be great if somehow we could get from here to there and not hear anything. I would love to go into that <laughs> and theater not know. and not know what they end up doing, but you know we're going to know everything by that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Thor, Thor Ragnarok was on TV the other day, and it was the scene where they introduced Hulk. And I remember thinking, like, how amazing would that be if you didn't know Hulk was behind that door? Like, yeah. that would have yeah. been such a great moment. I, but it was I, in a, every commercial and every trailer. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I listened to a guy talk that he had not known that, cause he, but he avoids every trailer. And I, I'm like, that's the way to do it, but I don't know how you'd ever... You couldn't be on Twitter. Mm-mm. I don't know. That's that's not a terrible sacrifice, probably. Yeah, that's not uh, a bit there, of parlor. We already we already have the <laughs> villain has been cast for Black Panther two, um, Tanak Huerta. He's a Mexican actor. Uh, he's most famous from the Narcos series. So it hasn't said who he's playing, but they are the villain has been cast, and the movie is going into production in a couple months. So, so do you know of a? Uh... I. I couldn't place a specific villain he could be. You know, Black Panther doesn't have the deepest bench for mm. uh, you know arch enemies or anything. That's why I thought maybe there was some obvious yeah. thing. I don't. I certainly don't know. Huh. Well, that's exciting because I was wondering. I'd heard he him say, Kugler say that he had a bunch written or whatever. Now he was going to scrap it, a lot of mm. it. You know so. I mean, there's so many Marvel movies. They could have just said, "Well, that was a tragedy. Let's just not do it too." Yeah, uh, that that would have been an, just as easy a, a solution. So I, they must have some good idea. Money, uh, money. It's not just yeah, it's not just motivated by the money. Yeah, smelling that money. And of mm. course, the biggest news we just got: uh, we're getting Wonder Woman 1984 on Christmas Day, streaming Finally! on HBO Max. Yes. HBO Max. After many, many delays, <laughs> it is hitting international markets a week before on December 16th. So if you live somewhere that's like, you know, like a first world country, that's like civilized and Coronavirus. Has, things, has things like functioning movie theaters, you'll get it on December 16th. But if you're stuck in the U.S., you'll get it on the 25th. If there's theaters open... It will. It's hitting whatever theaters are out there, but then it's also coming to HBO. And it HBO will only be. Been, I'm sorry. Go it on. will only be available to stream for a month, so it's just oh, a temporary oh. thing. Oh, it's I not did not just, know that. It's not just going to be on there forever. You get a you get a one month window. They are something. <laughs> but it doesn't cost extra like the Disney Plus does. Oh, don't. HBO has a problem. I don't know if anybody is actually following. There's all these. We've got 800 streaming things we're doing, but I mean, I'm pretty happy with HBO. You're you're, you're enjoying it, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I like the like, content as far as the original programming, but there is a lack of, of course, right now of new movies because there are no new, new movies to put on the, on the, on the channel. Right. Somebody they were talking. You know, they've been going back and forth about what they were going to do with this Wonder Woman movie for the last year. And it's like, it's like, guys, you're going to have to do something because who knows what, how it will come across in a few more months. You know, it it may seem quaint here pretty soon, you know? (laughs) And, and besides, I don't know if anyone had realized that HBO max is like an epic fail. If you, I mean, they've, it's a failure. They, it, it, there are no Disney Plus. No. You know, so, so if they want, I, I don't know how they waited this long to make the decision. I'm kind of surprised this whole take it off a month later. Well, I don't know what the deal is with that, but they're hoping like heck that people sign up because of Wonder Woman and then just stay signed up. Mm-hmm. So they better have something else. I did see see that they announced um, today that The Last of Us. Uh, thing was ordered to series that it, I mean, that's going to be the next big thing to series on HBO that I, I see coming because it was just such a huge video game series hit and, and that it, so it's definitely a thing now. Well, they also have the DC stuff coming those shows. 
are coming over from DC Universe, and yeah. they're they're we haven't talked about this, but the, that I'm sure new, that'll just drag in billions of people. <laughs> well, that new um, they're coming out with that new Green Lantern series now that's supposed to be uh you know all the the main characters i think it's going to be all it's set in different time periods yeah it's going to have the original alan, alan scott, scott and guy gardner and um that's cool what but for my point is you're talking about the general masses hbo was already a thing they had like 35 million subscribers mm mm-hmm. mhm they're like, okay, now we're doing HBO Max. We're going to do this new thing and buy everything. We're going to have friends. We're going to spend a half a billion dollars just on South Park, just to have South Park on there. They paid $500 million. They're, they're just spending money everywhere. Disney Plus, they just have not had a hit. Hey, HBO has not had a hit. Yeah. That is just like, they do not have a Mandalorian. And the man, Disney Plus has 75 million subscribers. HBO went from 35 million subscribers to 39 million subscribers. Yeah, and talking about people <laughs> not knowing the difference, like people didn't, what was HBO Max? They already knew what HBO was. That's Game of Thrones. What's HBO Max? There's nothing to set it apart. Right. Could it make Possibly it something new? be confusing that they're still... HBO, HBO Now, or whatever. It's like, stop well, that's, all of that. That's <laughs> my doing main, that. Yeah, that that's my main complaint is we signed up for HBO Max through our Hulu account because we already had HBO. Well, they don't make everything on HBO Max available on the HBO Max hub in Hulu. So there's some stuff I have to watch on my freaking phone Mm. to watch it because Roku doesn't can't agree and get an app with I HBO saw Max. they they cut a deal it is coming to Roku within a couple weeks I, I, no, I see it I saw an article about that no it wasn't Roku though it was um it was like have, fire stick or something it was it was Amazon fire stick yeah, yeah. and they and well, I could swear I saw a different article about it Roku. it could have been something very recent but I know it's Amazon this week and then the and like I said, it's the only app I don't have on PS5. It's like HBO needs to get their crap together because nobody's going to subscribe if they can't even if they have to fight right. to watch this stuff. And if you like, have an iPhone, you can airstream to Roku. Like you can, yeah, like, I can, I can cast it from my phone to my yeah. television. Yeah, I know. Nobody that. wants to. Nobody wants to do that. that. I just think that they just. They're screwing themselves, and they they did they spent all this money and didn't gain anybody. Yeah, and I actually like what they've done. I, I like I the just channel, think, but I, I like the app, uh, you know, and everything. But it's like it's got to work, and they've got to they got to get a hit. And like quick. you said, you know, we're paying eleven ninety nine for HBO Max, six dollars for Disney Plus, and Disney right. Plus has a button on my new remote of my new yeah. television I just bought. Exactly, that says that's Disney what, Plus. That's what on the the PlayStation remote I got. It's got. Disney Plus, Netflix, Spotify, and mm -hmm. something else. But it was just like HBO can't afford to put one on here. <laughs> they don't even have a dang app on here. They'll send you a sticker in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, eight. I I saw a figure the other day. I don't remember what it was, but how deep in debt AT and T is right now. How leveraged they are buying all this content and uh, absorbing all these companies. And it's all gonna start rolling downhill. Like all the, the there's been more firings at DC Comics. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's been shakeups. I'm sure people are gonna get fired because of how slow the rollout of this Max has been. So, yeah, AT and T as the corporate umbrella is in huge trouble. So somewhere down the ladder, you know, HBO's feeling it as well. I'm sure. Uh, I was gonna ask you guys. Well, I forgot when we were talking about Disney, but does anybody have trouble with their Disney Plus? I, the worst app I have for stuttering is Disney. If mm. anything, super action goes on, on mm. the Mandalorian, I, ha I might, I need to just pause and let it buffer. So it's just that app. You know, it's not, I've you got, know, I've got great internet. <laughs> I've it's, had that problem a lot of times with Netflix, 
but not Disney Plus. Well, I looked. I googled it today because I wanted to see what the deal was, and it's it's specifically Disney Plus people are having trouble with. Uh, I, was I know like, certain well, brands of television, smart TVs, have, uh, are not compatible mm. with Disney Plus. I know um, Samsung has problems with it, and there's another brand too that I constantly like see on Reddit where people are have they can't get it to work or whatever. I would say this is uh, one of that one of those deals with you know it's probably it doesn't communicate well with PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So we're that's we're living in the future. How does how are these little bugs still? Yeah. That... I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I don't. We, have we used any to get issues. TV over the, you know, an antenna. We moved <laughs> rabbit ears to get the TV, and we're so light years beyond that, and we're still. Let's like... go back to rabbits. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> What's the same? Uh, one, one more. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, just one more thing about Disney Plus. Uh, competing with Wonder Woman, Pixar's Soul is coming out on Disney Plus yeah. the same day, Christmas Day. Yes. So we're going to have gonna two cool. big, it was good, two theatrical releases to watch on Christmas Day Wonder Woman on HBO and Soul on Disney Plus. I, yeah, I that's love awesome. it. Because we mention, win. We uh, win yeah. with this competition. Yeah, we've already paid for that. We're going to yeah. get to watch that. Uh, I, I am a little excited because uh, whether, you know, the re- reviews weren't through the roof, but we're going to be able to rent Tenant or, or whatever in December. So that's. Mm-hmm the movie we didn't get to see this summer we wanted to see hmm. oh and coming to america was announced coming to coming to the number two america number two. was announced amazon prime said they're going to put it out in march beginning of march uh march 5th it will be on amazon prime so that's cool that's cool we win again yes uh what since i mentioned last of us i did want to say like None of you played that game, right? Either one, right? But you do you know the characters or whatever that Just Joel and El, Joel and Ellie. You know, it's the you know forty some year old guy with a beard and the young girl. And I remember the controversy when it started out in beginning of this past decade where they were making it, and they felt like the likeness of the girl was ellen page that they'd like yeah. ripped off ellen page i remember it was a controversy because she had a video game coming out they used ellen page motion capture and everything to make beyond two souls video game which wasn't a big hit or anything but but they kind of made the ellie look like her and um anyway i just wanted to predict i don't know if i i, I have a, a prediction and then who i wish they would cast for the girl but Prediction, I don't know how, because he is cast in everything, I don't know how Joel is not going to be played by Josh Brolin. He he pl- he always plays that guy, you know. So I could I see Josh Brolin as Joel and um what who I'd like to see, but she may be too old by then, but that Caitlin Deaver would be a good Ellie. Um but like I said, by the time they get going, I don't know how much they're going to want to make her young. But there's been no casting news. I haven't heard, you know, heard anything. But I could, I, I'm excited to see who they cast because I think it's going to be a big show. Like, I'm excited. We watched a big thing. Came out yet yeah, this week on HBO. By the way, HBO may Max. not have got. May, maybe this got them some subscribers. Yeah, it was well it was worth the, it. The Fresh Prince of Bel Air reunion. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> the last time we were here, we cleared this place out and we cried. <laughs> How crazy is it walking in here? The good old days. The good old days. <laughs> good old days. Look at this. We're missing our TV. That was with the Hillary, will you marry me? Now this is a story all about did, did how my everybody life see it? Michael, did you see it? Well, I saw most of it. Unfortunately, it was after working many, many hours and I fell asleep halfway through. Okay. So welcome, everybody, back to the, the set where 
a big chunk of our lives were lived out. And when I first walked on this set, uh, <clears throat> you know, you just don't, you, you don't realize how much life gets spent at work. Yeah. And it's just a beautiful thing for us that this turned into a real family and not work. Right. You know. Well, I don't know if you were there. Were you there for it? We had a trending uh, hashtag. It came out because halfway through the ep- the episode, we got to we got what we didn't even know we we needed until you're sitting there. You're like, this is awkward. There, just when you're starting to feel it creep up, up on you, you've already had it in the back of your head. You know, you think, man, this is weird that that she's not there and they're not saying anything. And then finally, he brought up Aunt Viv. OG Aunt Viv. OG Aunt Viv. And I was like, like oh. right before that, that's where I fell asleep. Yeah. Well, it was just like, just when you're like, man, it feels so weird. And then he, he, he said he got in touch with her and I'd never really known this, the whole story. No, I knew well, nothing. I, I, I knew she left. I didn't know anything beyond that. I didn't know it was a 30 year Hollywood that, you know, scandal. Story. Or some yeah. Story. Yeah. Yeah. How was that not a, yeah. I, I guess we were just maybe too young and not well, paying attention to the Hollywood beat. Right. right. And, and well, we didn't have Facebook or social media back right, then right. either to, you know. Yeah, it would have been cancel Aunt Viv or <laughs> cancel Will right. Smith. Right. But Aunt Viv was, was trending yesterday. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that was a really, really great. Yeah, Michael, he, he got, he asked her to come and had, he privately met with her, you know, or whatever. And hashed it out after twenty seven years or whatever. Yeah, and, and good on great. him. Good on him for you know owning up to it. You, you could know. tot. I mean, he did, but he didn't. Honestly, I feel like he didn't do enough because you know he did. He did. I'm not right yeah. on, but I was. Just, but I felt like he really was the problem. Yeah, back I, then he was too young to know to get to understand anything she was going through. And that's what I mean, like, when I say owning up to it, I mean, he acknowledged now that he didn't make the best decision there. Right. You know, whether he knew or not, he did not do justice to that, you know, to that actress. He didn't know what was going on, and he just want, you know, he was on the verge of being a superstar, and it was just kind of like, okay, you're, I'm bigger, I'm going to be bigger than you ever will be and and you know we'll just move it, on yeah it was touching but it also felt like i didn't as someone who doesn't know the story they didn't really go into it like so i don't you know not that they needed to recap all the dirty laundry or whatever but it's like wait why was she mad at you so i never quite still got the story beyond he was the star and got some you know her, her contract uh, was up they made her an offer and she turned it down because she thought it wasn't enough money. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, apparently she was in a bad marriage and she had just been pregnant and had this a, a new child, you know, a new baby. And, and he's totally unsympathetic working. to any of that, of course. Yeah. But but it was it was money. And she, you know, which it was neat to watch back when they first sh- sh- were showing clips of her when they started that segment. And you're like. She was super talented. Mm-hmm. Like she was the superior Aunt Viv. And like those are the only clips I remember. Like the young kid that was in the later seasons, I don't remember him. I must have stopped watching it. You must at have, some yeah. point. Yeah. So I, I, I yeah, I don't remember those later seasons at all. It, but yeah, it took me back. I had to think because I th- exactly I remember the first three seasons. And then at right about that point, like I think Will and Carlton moved to like the pool house and (laughs) like it kind of, you know, it was on the backward slide from there. Right. It was still good, but, but it took apart, took apart Carlton's motorcycle. Right. (laughs) Exactly. That's what I was trying to make some sort of a correlation there. Uh, Yeah. But they, they were, I balled my eyes out. You know, all the whole this stuff with to the James Avery was yeah, all that stuff. Watching behind the scenes things, and you know, just 
that kind of stuff. It's just like and how and they, them capturing how big of a historically it was for television and you know yeah. a black cast and everything. So yeah, what what yeah. I think they mentioned there were only three, um, you know, black TV shows on network television at the time. So and they how were they the got biggest to, one. Yeah, took you through their week how they got the script and then found you know they got to voice you know a black person would never say this or Mm. you know she wouldn't talk to her father that way and they got to adjust things and make it their own which is that's something else i thought was missing a little bit from this is like the behind the scenes who was who was writing these shows who was producing like were there people of color behind the scenes more than just a handful like it didn't really go into any of that probably not or who the voices were so yeah all right yeah Mm. definitely seemed like they all had a handle on their place in history and just what this meant and what what it meant to fans back then and today so yeah it seemed like they all kind of understood you know it all wasn't just some dumb tv show they did ages ago like it seemed like they kind of got got a grasp on what they what they had Good stuff. What else you watching? Something else you can watch on Christmas Day. It will be Alex Trebek's final episode of Jeopardy. Ooh. Um, he filmed his last batch of them. They've been running through. Um, each one's had a, you know, at the at the end of each episode here recently, the past week, it said you know dedicated to Alex Trebek, and they yeah. they've made mention of it, but he made enough that his last his very last one will air on on Christmas. Yeah, we've never watched a lot of, you know, that that um, syndicated game shows since you know we've had kids and stuff. It's a uh, we're usually eating dinner at that hour, or I'm coming home from work or whatever. Um, but here lately, Carly really enjoys Jeopardy, and so I've, when I come home, uh, I've been trying to, you know, if I remember, I flip it on over. And we've been watching a little bit of Jeopardy uh, here lately, and um, it's it's been fun. It's you know it, it's just fun. She's in eighth grade now, and and she's you know some answers she can she can get now, and and she's shouting stuff out, and I shout you know wrong answers a lot, but much like trivia night last night, but um, but but we've enjoyed it. So I did see that the. Christmas Day is going to be the last. There's a lot of speculation going around about who the new host will be. LeVar um, Burton. Yeah, there was a petition going around that uh, LeVar Burton from Reading Rainbow. And, in Star uh, Trek. In Star Trek. Um, <laughs> in fact, he even tweeted out about it, just you know, thanking people that they would think of him for that. So, Yeah, I, I guess at one point I thought... Ken Jennings would be good. And Nick said, he was like, what's it? Is he, you have to have a personality. Or something. I was like, Ken Jennings is hilarious and not, not just smart. He's very funny. He would be great at it. But I saw a clip of Alex saying, they said, who do you think would, would take over when you're done? And he was very clear that he thought it should be a woman. And so hmm. I've heard no talk of any women, hmm. you know, I've heard George Stephanopoulos, I've heard LeVar Burton, but I'm not, I'm not h- heard any women's names. Yeah. So what's, I, the, I, what's the British lady from the weakest link doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phrase it in the form of a question, you moron. <laughs> <laughs> they could bring back the dunce cap from Ben, when Ben Stein's money. <laughs> Who is the weakest link? <laughs> So, yeah. And the other little bit of news we had of a TV icon, Conan O'Brien, is ending his show on TBS in June. After 10 years on the network, 30 some years on the air now, I think. Um, he's Speaking moving to HBO, HBO Max. Max. Yes. <laughs> I'll try anything. How many millions of dollars did they throw at him? Yeah. So he's going to do a weekly variety series. So it's not going to be the normal, typical talk show thing. It's going to be a variety series. I'm sure music and comedy and who knows, but I, I would look forward to something new. I said the talk show format's been around since the fifties. You know, it, it's, you do a monologue, a little comedy bit, talk to somebody, have a musical guest. Like 
he we can shake that up. We can shake it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He and he's oh, changed. It, he's changed it up a little bit. Like I've noticed on his TBS show, he no longer wears a suit. It's a little bit more casual. But I've I been li- watching a lot more since quarantine mm-hmm. because it is there's something you know he might do something you don't expect. Yeah. I listened to his uh, to his podcast he's been doing called Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, and it's a lot of fun because he you know he can say whatever he wants, um, and kind of be a little he can be a little bit more off the cuff and and you know a little bit he can be more vulgar he can just have fun with it and you can kind of tell on that show like he is just having fun again. So I wondered how much of that influenced his, like, oh, I'm going to go do a variety show now. I'll just do whatever I want. Yeah, he's built up a whole network of podcast shows of all his, you know, friends and coworkers and comedians that he likes. Like, he's kind of cultivated a, a, an entire podcast domain, right. Team Coco. Uh, I said TBS is still going to air the Conan Without Borders specials. So if he makes a few of those a year, I'm guessing those will still be on TBS, but everything else will be on HBO. And in a statement, O'Brien said, quote, In 1993, Johnny Carson gave me the best advice of my career. As soon as possible, get to a streaming platform. <laughs> so there. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Well, I'm just going to burn through a few things I watched. Uh, on HBO Max, there's some show called How To with John Wilson, and he's some sort of comedian or whatever. It's it feels very Nathan for you. If you've ever watched Nathan for you, it's produced by Nathan, and it's just this guy like uh, be, talking to people on the street and stuff, and just just like Nathan would, but he. He just like one first episode, I think it was how to make small talk. And he like tries to make small talk with people, but they're like telling him all these, all their problems. And he's like, no, I'm trying to make small talk. And then, uh, and there's like, how to, you know, all about scaffolding. And then another one's like how to cover your furniture. I would, uh, I skipped the fourth episode. I, I think one, maybe no, that was, that might have been the one. I don't know. There's one where there's a naked guy, and I, I tell, there he is a naked guy, and I did not want to see all that. One was about like the Mandela effect, and it was the, it was all like talking mm-hmm. to all these crazy people that believe Ronald in P. that Trent. stuff, and that reminded me of Michael like big time. Yeah, it was. Like, it was like all these people that just believe that stuff and like having meetings and stuff. So that was kind of fun um something else i watched on netflix a huge hit extreme hit that i'm sure you've heard of the queen's gambit men are gonna come along and want to teach you things doesn't make them any smarter you just let them blow by and you go on ahead and do just what and how you feel like someday you're gonna be all alone so you need to figure out how to take care of yourself Tell the readers of life how it feels to be a girl among all those men. I don't mind it. Chess isn't always competitive. Chess can also be beautiful. You're an orphan, Beth. I'm fine being alone. I feel safe in an entire world of just 64 squares. Creativity and psychosis often go hand in hand. Or for that matter. Anya Taylor Joy playing chess. And she's, you know, it's it's a beautiful show, and everybody's acting like it's the greatest thing that ever happened. And I my vote is that it is extremely fine. And she's pretty. <laughs> and it's a you know, it's a it's a pleasant show to watch. There's almost nobody that there's like no antagonist yeah she's playing chess and everybody that you think would be against her just wants to help her it's Mm. like there's just no problems (laughs) almost ever anybody you think is a problem isn't michael that's weird did you watch this 
Mm -mm. Did Christy watch it by chance? No, I don't think so. I watched the first episode, my but my wife ended up she kind of binged it in a couple of days, um, and she really liked it. I mean, like really liked it. And I, know, I knew people it, love it. Yeah, it was getting high praise. Um, and I only watched that first episode, and I was just kind of eh. I enjoyed it because I like it. You know, I like things like competition, things like that. And I like chess. It was neat to watch them play chess. They don't really explain a lot of it. Yeah. It's really not about that. It's not about the actual playing of the chess. It's about playing against the other person, mm -hmm. playing off of what they, they're they doing. And uh, But again, it's it's beautiful. It's a beautiful show. And it's a, it's a comforting show to watch. Like you're not like stressing out ever. So I guess that must be what a lot of people like. I also, also watch the... Uh, documentary series i think it's like four episodes uh the challenger final flight on netflix talking about the challenger mm -hmm. like we said before that's one of the things you remember we remember in our generation september 11th and the challenger i was in eighth grade sat in the back of the class but i they, that's where the tv got wheeled into and <sighs> turned around front row seat for that baby blowing up and that yeah. fat lady teacher running over and shutting the tv off so fast that's, they, we, that's there weird. was stuff I, I did not know. So if you have interest in this and you, I did not know a lot. I didn't like delve into it at the time, but there was a lot of controversy about that apparently. So if you are interested in that, there's some real messed up people involved in that. Like some people, you know, some things happened and I'm sure the mistakes were made. But they, and there's some people that just, just have no regrets about anything they did and they come off really badly. <laughs> it's like, so it's interesting to watch if you're into the space stuff. Yeah. I remember I was in first grade and same, same, weirdly the same experience. I remember the TV cart being rolled in Oh yeah. and watching it. And then I think they just, I, I have a vivid memory of that just being replayed all day. Oh, just they yeah. just showed it over and over and over, and I'm in first grade, and we're just watching it over and the over. The Christmas over. story. Uh, Ralphie is involved in this story. Really? Yes. So, Peter Billingsley, whatever his name is. Yes, the guy Ralphie. Yeah, he is involved. The actor. Yes. <laughs> so, there, if I didn't draw you in, I don't know what. Cliff, yeah, come on, I'm there. Um. The last thing I was going to say, some huge news I actually feel like I wish I would have led with. In reality TV, a week or so ago, CBS announced that for their three of their shows, Survivor, Big Brother, and Love Island, that they pledge to, from now on, have 50% people of color cast in these shows. Just all is what I complained about. I all, they, but, uh, I went on, somebody like, listens to, to this. Never going to be fair until they do that. And they pledged that from now on, they said. So that's huge. That's huge news that they would pledge to do that. So that's great. It's going to change the whole thing. Hmm. That's all I got. So sorry for monopolizing. <laughs> Michael, what do you got? Um, I started watching that. Um, on HBO. Oh, speaking of HBO Max, it's leaving Amazon next year's Fire Stick. Like, and it's HBO's fault. Like, th th they're not allowing that to be on Amazon on the Fire Stick, their TVs and stuff. They want to. We just announced it went on there. I thought. <laughs> I know. It's they're, they're taking it off already. <laughs> Breaking yeah. news. To you from us. It only lasted the length of this podcast. <laughs> this was the same episode. Wow. Yeah, it updated three hours ago. Yep. In a confession to Warner Media, Amazon will move HBO from Amazon channels next year. Wow, we did it. <laughs> I wish that I'd have been like, HBO is going to you know Amazon. And they were like, nope, that's gone. <laughs> Breaking news. Uh, but anyway, you guys are talking about. Um, I mean, it's been a while ago, but I just finally got around to watching that Lovecraftian show. Yeah, and I've only gotten the first episode. It was really good. I really it's enjoyed good. it. It's a good episode. You're going to be highly disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> second I'm episode. Sure. Second episode. No. Third episode. Yeah, yes. fourth episode. No, yeah, no it, everyone it, just no one talked about that show after the first couple. Weeks. I don't. I, I, I haven't heard anything about it. I never finished it. 
I this is going to sound horribly wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. Oh, boy. It's probably not going to Can we say goodbye? Right. Let's but sign I off love, first. I love the way they dealt with racism in that episode. Yeah. Because it, Why does that sound weird? Well, I, I mean, you can say, oh, you love racism. Well, Michael like, no, loves, I just, Michael loves oh, racism. Oh, we're big on cutting up what you say. Well, yeah. you don't mess I, it up I enough. love the way they ran those people out of town. Is, like, is that what you're saying? <laughs> you love, I love how they ran them out of town. <laughs> and, yeah. But again, it, it, like, it makes me think a lot of times with like Stephen, Stephen King novels and stuff, you get into uh, the reality horror is much more scarier than the fantasy uh, yeah the fantasy but anyway i just i love the way they dealt with that in that first episode and in how uh, you, you again you forget that really wasn't that long ago um mm. but hopefully well obviously i'm gonna get disappointed as it goes on so it, it could end great we we just don't know michael you segued too good for me to not bring up that i read a book <laughs> about it's, racism about no it's a stephen king book and i i had mentioned that mr mercedes show and that there was a trilogy and i'd read the first book i was going to read the second and third before i got to finish that sh show and so i read the second book i liked it even more than the first book was enjoying the heck out of it and then the last paragraph like setting up the next book just was the worst paragraph i've ever read it was so bad it makes me it makes me not even want to read the next book only because the first two books there's like i, I haven't read you know i it doesn't there's like not supernatural stuff going on it's uh yeah or the show there was like no supernatural like the sec, second book nothing until the end and it's setting up like some supernatural stuff that is totally unnecessary. He had a good thing going. It's old detective and all this stuff, and he just blew it. He just got to do it. He's got to do it. Well, speaking of Stephen King, oh, right back at me. I, I lobbed it up. <clears throat> Has anyone seen the previous? I, is this HBO Max also the Stand? The the remaking of the Stand miniseries that's coming I out. I want to say you're right. Yeah, I think it might right. be. Yeah. I'm I'm curious to see if it's going to be as good as it as it once was. I guess I'm hearing no, but we'll we're gonna have to wait and see. I I feel like if this was done this way, maybe 10, 15 years ago, it would be a huge hit. But with shows like The Walking Dead and all the other like post-apocalyptic shows that have been so popular, I don't know if it's gonna be that great. Yeah, I don't know. Google says CBS All Access. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yes, where I watch my Star Trek. That's yeah. why I knew it. That's how we knew it. Yep. Well, see, I thought he was going to say, speaking of Supernatural, Supernatural the series. The segues, the segues are flying <laughs> fast and furious. <laughs> uh, the last episode just aired um, this week. Never so, saw one. Season 15, I do believe. Um, longest running. Yeah, CW. something CW show. Yeah, yeah. And I, I saw a single episode. Totally Before never. that, it was uh, uh, Smallville. Was yeah, it came out when. Yeah, because the Jensen Ackles was uh, originally on Smallville, and even way back then, guys, fifteen years ago, guess what? Uh, the CW was using uh, actors from one show to the other. <laughs> so maybe For he'll shot, pop up yeah. on Riverdale <laughs> this year. Uh yeah, actually, I've watched Supernatural up to, I think maybe the seventh or eighth season. Maybe mm. you're not half. You're not halfway done. Yeah, about halfway. <laughs> you watched seven seasons and you're not halfway done. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's actually a pretty good show, honestly. It, it's, it's got kinda... a diehard oh, fan base. Oh, yeah, people yeah. love it. Yeah, mm. I saw some headlines about, um, you know, apparently there was a big character death in the finale. So, just. Throwing it out there. Well, I just got my sudden link bill, and they cranked it up twenty extra dollars. So I'm, I wanted to make sure we recorded tonight, and then I'm gonna call them and see if I can finagle something. But I gotta be able to can, I gotta be able to cancel 
I got to have that in my back pocket to be able to can't, you know, I, I got to mm. tell them I can cancel and not be bluffing. So I wanted to be sure we got our recording done tonight before I tempted the sudden link gods. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm, my, I'm, my showtime <laughs> access is in the oh, air. I have to let man. you know if my, if I keep the same package or not, I can keep all this showtime. Ooh, this is, we need to know. <laughs> Things are happening. But they finished. Good Lord Bird ended the the Western uh, abolitionist show with Ethan Hawke. Seven episodes, really, really good. They just started a documentary about the Reagans. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan said himself, if you are not a good actor, you cannot be a good president. You would not have got elected president without Nancy. So your position has made it impossible to Doing everything we can. My father was kind of a strange fellow to be president of the United States. There's nothing like being in the saddle all day. He was a caricature out of American culture. Nancy was the presence over everything. Oh, there he is. People were afraid of her. Ronald Ray lived in a world he created. What the ideal couple would look like. When the red light went on the camera, he was superb. We just made sure that he never got off script. Never responsibility to you. You are a liar. It was our job to protect him, protect him from himself. With regard to um, the... Really solid, like, uh, the first episode was about him. You know, he's a liberal Hollywood actor. And then he gets kind of roped into conservative politics. And, you know, how much is just... What he believes is it a, is it a performance of an actor, or is he really convinced of these things? So, uh, yeah, for being a very huge cultural figure in my lifetime, I don't know that much about Ronald Reagan or Nancy Reagan. So, all you need to know is he was evil. <laughs> uh, Nancy was the one kind of pulling the strings, according to this documentary. She well, she she, had, a, she had a lot more to do with it. Also, uh, I do believe. Uh, you know, current events, the election that just happened. Uh, I do believe drugs finally won the war on drugs. <laughs> right. So c- congrats. Great job, drugs. <laughs> I voted uh, for you. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for you, drugs. And I checked out Disney Plus even more than The Mandalorian. I've actually started kind of looking through it a little bit. Nice. Because I saw an ad for something. I was talking, I said, just watching Community, and my love of Gillian Jacobs just keeps growing and growing. And I saw something about Gillian Jacobs doing this Marvel documentary. I'm like, what what is that about? Is she a comic fan, or what is this? So I didn't know what this was, but it's called Marvel 616, described as an anthology documentary series that explores the cultural, societal, and historical impacts of the Marvel Universe and its intersection with the everyday world. So it's basically eight episodes, each one's by a different filmmaker, and it's you know it's on Disney Plus, so it's going to be very raw, raw Marvel, raw, raw Disney, and all the great stuff we produce here at Disney. But uh, I watched two of them. Uh, one was Gillian Jacobs, and it was all about like the women of Marvel. And, you know, from those early bullpen days of Fabulous Flo, Steinberg, and Marie Severin, and the, the kind of the unappreciated artists back in the day, and up through Ms. Marvel and Kamala Khan becoming a huge new character, and all the, the women getting work today at Marvel. And then the other one I watched was uh, Paul Shear, the comedian. It was basically a documentary about him trying to pitch a show to, to Disney+. Plus. So it was him, and this one this one was a little more comedic, so some of the stuff was obviously staged, but it's him going in and talking to the executives of like, you know, find find something unique and think out of the box and something, a character you can make your own. So he goes and interviews several Marvel insiders and like asks them, what are some really obscure characters? So they talk about, you know, US-1, the trucker comic from the oh. 70s. Uh, some really some really obscure oddball Marvel history and characters that you you maybe not know if you just know the movies, and he settles on brute force, the four animals. Yeah, the I actually of, had issue one of that. It was a four issue miniseries. 
but it's animals with cybernetic uh, attachments. One's a dolphin. A dolphin, a bear, a kangaroo, a lion. And, like, it was basically their... It said Marvel was so successful turning toys into comics. It thought, well, what if we do a comic that could then become a toy? So they basically made a comic that could easily be adapted into a toy, and nobody cared. So it's basically Paul Shear like, a deep dive into brute force and how he could turn that into a cartoon for Disney+. Plus. So those are the two I watched today. The other ones involve, there's one about different artists working for Marvel, one about the writers. There's one all about the Japanese Spider-Man TV show from the 70s. Mm-hmm. And it interviews the creative staff and the actors from that. Uh, there's one about cosplayers, an episode about toys, and one episode about uh, a series of stage plays they have produced. Marvel has this program where they've written plays for high schools. So high school kids can put on these Marvel, you know, Marvel characters as these stage plays. So that might be an interesting one to take a look hmm. at. But I, I picked the two that I thought would be most interesting, and I, I enjoyed them both. So it's yes, it's it's Disney propaganda. <laughs> it's a big ad for more Disney <laughs> stuff, but it's it it was it was fun to watch as a as a Marvel. Except fanboy. your your place as subject in the system. Yes. Where you consume right. what the overlord feeds you. Nobody does propaganda like Disney. <laughs> One quarter portion. Now, Jordan, going <laughs> back to Showtime, have you checked out Moonbase 8? Yeah, yeah, that just premiered. Is that what John That's C. Riley? Armisen, Fred Armisen? Yeah. John C. Riley, Fred Armisen, and Tim Heidecker are they, they're hopefuls to be astronauts. So it's basically mm. them living in a fake NASA camp in Arizona uh, and just going through the training and trying to be, so it's, and it's like, it's kind of sweet. It's all, it, I, it's, there wasn't anything for those three actors. I thought, you know, it's going to be edgy and kind of dirty. So, but it seemed kind of like family friendly. Like they're, yeah, I, I would say the, the humor I, I, was very gentle. Oh, I don't, I, I, don't, know, I don't mean that as a criticism, but I can picture Fred Armisen doing his very earnest, Oh, yeah. well, we're going to need to, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it has, it was not the best thing I've watched this year, but it's, it, that, that, that cast is terrific. So it's, it's been the first two episodes have aired so far. I feel like there's a lot of space NASA Ooh. stuff out there right now. I talked about a f- few episodes ago. I'm still watching that, uh, that Nat Geo series on Disney Plus, the, uh, the right stuff. And then we just had the big, uh, yeah, my social media was full of the the Dragon X launch with the astronauts the other day. We're all and... trying to get out of here, man. <laughs> what it is? <laughs> Reach for the stars. That's why. It just I mean, it's been it's not that long ago, but I had listened to this podcast cast series that it was like eight episodes, and it was about like um, I feel like it was uh, it was on a mountain in Hawaii where they like acted like that was the closest thing to Mars. And they, I think it was like eight people they put in like a biosphere and they had to act like they were on the planet Mars for like six months, maybe Mm -hmm. to see how they interacted and everything they did, like going out and all of like the aspects of it, they had to act like they were on the planet Mars the whole entire time. Go astronaut. And you listen to it. And you just watch them all break down, interacting with each other and like things breaking the bios- biosphere and, and who hooked up and like, yeah. like the, on the very last day there, like the, I think the guy's playing like a ukulele and they're just all freaking out. Like, can you not play this right now? And he's just over there strumming away. I mean, they're ready, ready to kill each other. This would be that uh, you would be that guy. You would be I the would one be. guy. It's like this is great. <laughs> like playing your ukulele and and like the, that, that's why I can't buy Star Trek as humanity's future. <laughs> We're never gonna get there. We're never gonna get along. Yeah. Be one peaceful coalition. See, those are on big starships. These are these are close quarters. They're super tight. Like if we have big open spaces. It can happen. There was a similar episode of Netflix's uh, Space Force. 
<laughs> I love. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> and and yeah, it kind of ends that way with Steve Carell. He drives them all crazy, and then he breaks down, and yeah. Just want to leave. <laughs> Space man. Did we ever? Is there any? Is Space Force still a thing after Biden takes over? <laughs> That's a very good question. That is a good question. Like, do they yeah. have to keep? Funding it and like, how about let's try healthcare force? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm all for like it was for just the stars, kind of, but yeah, it just seemed kind of like invented on the fly. So, like, does he have to keep pretending and going along with it? Yeah, aren't they part of the Air Force? No, like, no, they weren't. I thought the same thing, but no, it was supposed to be a, a separate branch. Of the just military, keep, keep selling, keep selling T-shirts and hats and memorabilia. Yeah. Logo that looks just like uh, Star Trek. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. That's a crazy world. Wouldn't that be great if Paramount sued the United States military? Yes, that'd be awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> would be great. <laughs> <laughs> One last lawsuit for Trump before he leaves office. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That's what that's what finally brings them down. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're gonna need that lapel pin, sir. <laughs> Intellectual property. <laughs> uh. Wow. Ah, TV. <laughs> I went off the rails with that one. What's yeah. what's better than TV? Not much. Not video, reality. Video games. <laughs> I feel like I got it out of my system tonight. Only took about three hours. Good. So, uh, coming up soon is episode 250. And boy, do we have something for you guys. Whoa, and as soon as we know what it is, we will let you know. Man, it's going to be great. So, if you've stuck around with us for this long, wow, thank you. Congrats. Thank you. You (laughs) did it. Maybe we did it, but we couldn't have did it without you. So thank you very much. Is that it? We done? Mm, that works for me. Okay, that's good. We're done. We're professional, and we're done. And my name is Jordan Love. Cliff Barnes. The partial existing Michael K. Easton. So you guys should let me cut him off. I'm Seth. Goodbye forever. Kapow! The Pop Cultured Podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Sounds, music, and clips played during the podcast are property of copyright holders. All original content is property of www.udamwithkpp.com. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a comment. Kapow! The Pop Cultured Podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, and wherever podcasts can be found. You can connect with us through social media on Facebook, YouTube, at The Kapow Podcast on Twitter, or email the show, Kapow! The Pop Cultured Podcast at gmail.com. If you really want to go the extra mile, please sign up to be a patron through the Podbean app or our website, www.udamwithkpp.com, to receive special content and early access to some episodes. We are grateful to anyone that chooses to contribute, but please know that most of our content will always remain free, so please continue to like, comment, and share. <laughs>